If you could only visit one city on the Texas coast, that would be Galveston, hands down. With so much to see and do here, Galveston has a flavor unique to the state of Texas, and there's no city here quite like it. This part of the Texas coast was once home to a group of natives known as the Karankawa, and this island may be the location of the shipwreck of Cabeza de Vaca in 1528. Afterwards, the Karankawas treated them kindly and brought them food. Cabeza de Vaca would spend about four years in the Galveston area and was more or less a prisoner for much of the time, finally escaping in 1532. Eventually, he would write a book describing the cultural practices of the natives across southern Texas and northern Mexico called Relacion. Galveston was named after Bernardo de Galvez of Mexico. This island served as a naval base to support the Mexican Revolution in the early 1800s. Soon afterwards, it was occupied by a group of pirates led by Jean Lafitte. These pirates took advantage of the instability across the former Spanish colony. During the Texas Revolution, the island served as the harbor for the Texas Navy. Galveston was established as a town in 1838. It was an important port for trade and the arrival point for many groups of European immigrants during the 1800s, Czechs, Germans, and others. It was occupied briefly by Union forces during the Civil War, but the Battle of Galveston on January 1st, 1863, returned it back to the Confederacy for the rest of the conflict. In the late 1860s, there was a massive outbreak of yellow fever across Texas, much of it likely radiating from the busy port town. Despite this, Galveston was the largest city in Texas for most of the late 1800s. Being positioned on the northwest portion of the Gulf Coast, Galveston is vulnerable to hurricanes, the most famous occurring in 1900. A total of 10 to 12,000 people died in Galveston and the nearby coastal areas. This led to the construction of the Galveston Seawall, a popular place to walk, drive, or bike along today. At the time of the hurricane, Galveston was one of the wealthiest cities in the nation. Soon afterwards, Dallas with its railroads and Houston with railroads and its own port began to dominate the state's economy. Galveston was the first city in Texas to have a cotton press, the first to have gas lights, electric lights, and a telephone. This city also opened the first bakery and opera house in the state. The first medical college in Texas was opened in Galveston in 1891, now University of Texas Medical Branch. In the first half of the 1900s, Galveston was known for being a sin city with gambling and prostitution, but the Texas Rangers cracked down on this activity in the late 1950s. Interestingly enough, the population has steadily declined ever since, now at around 50,000. It is great to be back on the Strand. This is one of my favorite downtowns in all of Texas to walk around in. I just love it. One of my favorite places to go in all of Galveston is this old candy shop and ice cream parlor. So now I'm at the historic Galveston Seaport. Let's see what they've got for us. This is the tall ship Elissa, a 144 year old boat. Beautiful.
Built in Aberdeen, Scotland, 1877. Wow, so much to explore here. What a treat this is. Good luck going down this. <laughs> So now we're here at the Galveston Railroad Museum. So we're just gonna walk around and look at some of these historic locomotives and train cars. So the history of railroads in Texas begins in the 1830s. But the first locomotive in Texas didn't arrive until around 1850, the General Sherman in Galveston. So there's a nice timeline for you. So there are train rides available here at the Galveston Railroad Museum. Multiple train cars that you can go inside and explore. All to yourself, you and your family. Nice cozy place to enjoy the ride. Nice and private. Wow. I envy the era of the railroad. I imagine many cigars were smoked in this room. So there's so much to see here at the Galveston Railroad Museum. It's even more impressive than I thought. Here's a 1922 locomotive. Classic Santa Fe diesel. As you walk through here and explore this museum, you can't help but find yourself wishing that we still lived in the railroad era. What a great way to travel. I'm sure you'd meet a lot of interesting people, make friends on your long journey. So here we are in the old Galveston train station. Imagine coming here, getting your train ticket, and heading off to a faraway place. What a sad day. There are so many historical buildings in Galveston, I can't even begin to capture them all in one short video. But I'll try to show you some of the more notable ones in town. 
So this is the 1894 Grand Opera House. So there are plenty of hotels that you can stay in all around Galveston, but I want to point out a couple of them here. First, the Tremont House in the downtown area right next to the Strand. This was formerly the Leon H. Bloom Company building constructed around 1880. Let's go take a look in the lobby here. One of my favorite historic hotels in Texas is the 1911 Hotel Galvez. There seem to be beautiful historic homes around every corner in this city. This one wasn't even on my list, I just found it. The McDonough House. With so many historic homes and buildings, it is a true delight to drive down Broadway here in Galveston. This is the Ashton Villa. This home was built in the year 1859. One of the most unique churches in all of Texas is the incredibly beautiful Sacred Heart Catholic Church. And right next door to the church is one of my most favorite historic homes in all of Texas, Bishop's Palace. I'll never forget the first time I saw this gorgeous home. So you enter the house through the basement, pay for your tour, and then head up the stairs. Wow, what an entrance. Incredible. Such a breathtaking home. So you do get to take an electronic tour guide with you as you walk through this house and it will explain all of the rooms and the history of the home. Looks like they're preparing to decorate for Christmas right now. All right, let's go up this beautiful staircase. So this home was built by Walter Gresham, originally from Virginia, served in the Confederacy, and moved to Texas after the war. The Diocese of Galveston purchased the home in 1923 to be the residence of the bishop. Oh, wow. The stained glass here is of very high quality. Beautiful, vivid colors. So there's some great historical information here on the walls. The 1900 storm that hit Galveston. This is one of the buildings that survived. Some really nice historical photos of just after the storm on the wall here. Winds of 140 miles an hour and a storm surge of over 15 feet. I can't imagine. Really nice gift shop down here.
one of the greatest historic homes in Galveston is Moody Mansion, which you can also tour. And I highly recommend it. Moody Mansion was built in the year 1893 and is another survivor of the Great Galveston Storm of 1900. Inside this lovely park area is the 1880 Garden Varane building. Just stunning. From outside, here's a little glimpse. One of the important early residents of Galveston, John Henry Hutchings. So here's another example of the many gorgeous historic homes you can see in Galveston. This is the 1838 Michael B. Menard House. So this is just an example of some of the beautiful architecture that you can see here in Galveston. This is the 1886 Franklin Wandless House. And all along this street here are other examples of beautiful historic homes. So this is the 1895 Robert Polliser House. And here is the 1887 Coppersmith Inn Bed and Breakfast. What a gorgeous building. One of the features that I personally love about Galveston is all the tropical plants that you can see here. Because Galveston is part of an island surrounded by warm Gulf Coast water, it's moderated during the winter time. And so the island itself is at around a 9B to 10A hardiness zone. One of the great places to see this on full display is Moody Gardens. Just love going for a stroll around here. So relaxing and beautiful. 